Hey guys, this is Alex Olson here with another multifamily minute in Kansas City, Missouri, where I look at everything that's coming on the market uh, recently, as well as what exchange CRE has off market that should be of interest to you. And uh, and again, this is Alex Olson with Exchange Commercial Real Estate. Looking forward to just diving right into it. So here is LoopNet. And since there's only one new property on here in the last week or so, which is uh, probably common, most things are sold off market, which is why we pride ourselves on the value of off market deals. And so this particular deal is at 43rd and Harrison, 12 units listed for 1.4 million. Uh, and I would say this is pretty common price point for this particular area. Uh, I've actually sold a lot of property in the Midtown Westport area as listed here in the last year. We sold an 18 unit, a 12 unit, I'm selling another 12 unit, a seven unit, that's all within this kind of corridor uh, here. We've sold stuff on the plaza. So I guess really kind of what I'm saying is long story short is I have plenty of comps that I could share with you uh, and can give you my expert opinion on this particular property. Uh, so I wanted to zoom in since it's the only one we got, zoom in a little bit closer here. You can see our, our office is actually up Let's see if I can fit it on this map here. Up here is where our office is. And this is located over here. Excellent location, uh, just west of Truce by one block on Harrison. And I've owned property on Harrison in the past and actually sold property on Truce up here on 35th and Truce or so here recently. So this is um, a good location. Price point seems fine. I haven't dove into every single bit of information on the rents and everything. Based on the photos, looks like a fine property. Um, chances are by the time you're watching this, it may even be gone. If not, if you want more information on it, you want to put a deal together on this deal, uh, reach out to me and we'll, we'll take a stab at it. And uh, I think it'd be a lot of fun. So that's everything that LoopNet has to offer. And just a quick overview of LoopNet. So LoopNet is going to be everything that, uh, that CoStar really has to offer and a couple other smaller websites. It's really kind of the go-to Zillow MLS competitor for uh, the larger multifamily stuff. So I'll even zoom out here for you. And again, this is filtered down to just Kansas City, just multifamily, and uh, you know something that has come on the market in the last seven days. And so even looking... Uh, farther out, uh, we've got a property in St. Louis here that just popped on the market in the last couple of days. And there's looks like a property over here. So this will give you just kind of a, an overview of, of the activity of stuff that comes on the market uh, within the last week. But our focus is on Kansas City, uh, of course. And um, uh, yeah, so let's move on. So next up we have in the Zillow world. So this would be the MLS, everything on the MLS that is marked as um, in this particular filter settings, 500,000 above, multifamily property, uh, something that's for sale. And I have these here sorted by the most recent uh, properties. And there's technically three multifamily properties that came on the market here in uh, the last seven days. Uh, one of which is this fourplex in Oak Grove at 700,000. Um, that seems a little strong on the per unit size there. So 700,000, if that's truly only four units, uh, that's 175,000 a unit, which is pretty strong. Oak Grove is a great, great little uh, sub market, uh, but I, I don't know if the rents actually uh, would support that price point, but maybe they do. Um, and we can dive into those if you want to. And then we have this property here, which is actually scattered site uh, series of homes. Looks like there's a couple homes in here. I can tell because this is, this is not a duplex and I've actually clicked into the listing um, and noticed, but this is several homes for 675. Again, single family homes. So not really multifamily, but uh, there are some single family home buyers out there, which are excellent investments of themselves. 
Um, happy to dive into further on those details as well. Um, and then we do have this particular building, which is located, I'll zoom in here, uh, just east of 71. It's more of a mixed use style property. And uh, I've never actually transacted directly in this area, I don't think. Um, but this is a good opportunity for investor that likes, I guess, cheaper properties, mixed use, more of a development project uh, at a lower price point could be a good opportunity for 1031 exchange buyers that really like to uh, put their money to work. Uh, and so that's really the market recently as a whole. There's a couple of properties on here that you've seen before. Um, there's this one down here in Pleasant Hill, which is a fourplex for 595. We've got, uh, let's see here, over here, that those are the couple we've already highlighted before in the past. And I think, uh, yeah, so that really covers everything that's on the market on the MLS that's gonna be 500,000 plus. So not a ton of opportunity uh, out there really. And so when you, then I wanted to kind of look at focusing on uh, the, the properties that we have off market on exchange CRE. And last week I talked about a property in Liberty, which is nine units for, uh, 850,000. And then in Pleasant Valley, we have eight units for 650,000. Both of those excellent value at opportunities uh, hit me up. I can send you our latest deal flow email so you can get the details on those. But basically the Liberty deal projects out at a little over a seven cap with good appreciation. And then we also have the Pleasant Valley that's also going to project out over a seven cap with uh, less work to do on there. So then I wanted to highlight uh, another area here. Again, this is Kansas City. This right here is the downtown loop, we call it, uh, which you've got the Sprint Center, Power and Light, quote unquote skyscrapers in this area. Baseball stadiums likely to go into kind of this gray brown area because they've been buying it. Uh, in my opinion, to stockpile the land to build a stadium there. Well, there are several opportunities in this area. This is historic Northeast, really kind of all this area over here. And over on the Benton side, I have a couple off-market opportunities that you'll see on my deal flow. One's a 29 unit and one's a 13 unit, two separate uh, sellers that both buildings have varying degrees of opportunity and you could probably buy both of them for somewhere between an average combined average of 50 to 65 grand a door uh, and really kind of propel this area forward on the gentrifying aspect of it. We bought and sold quite a few in this area. Uh, I have another property actually that is hopefully coming to my list uh, over here east of east of 71 at a great price point considering, you know, proximity to the, to the hopefully fingers crossed new stadium. Uh, so again, you're gonna get forced appreciation, forced gentrification, all that with the power of the downtown area, the beloved crossroads area. And there are numerous amounts of development opportunities that are happening here. Of course, the streetcar runs right down uh, Main Street and is expanding even further south. So uh, zooming in, which is fun to do, you can see the area and how it's, it's densely laid out. These particular, let me see if I can turn this filter off. Oops, um, no, okay, hang on, bear with me. Uh, let's go with, let's see here, we got 3D. We got some of these other things. Let's turn this off. So now we're really just looking at uh, the bear map here in this area. This is historic Northeast. Zooming in, um, you've got Kansas City University just up here, which is a really cool area. This again, a, a doctor's university. And these particular folks are going for their doctor of, 
Um, I don't even know if I want to pronounce the name, but it's uh, similar to an MD. They have to pass the same boards and, and uh, everything that's required to be an MD. Um, it's called Kansas City University. And let's go to 3D here. And you can kind of see uh, this actually has already been developed. So this map's a little bit outdated, but um, uh, there's this particular building here. There is a lot of apartment style complexes down here. Your standard traditional, uh, what I would classify as colonnade style, you know, built a hundred years ago, kind of apartments have been revamped over time. And uh, then we continue just a few blocks west. And as we kind of scroll, letting the map come out. So now you can start to see really where downtown comes into play. And you've got the potential likely spot for a baseball stadium in these vacant parking lots here. Um, this building was recently re-approved for multifamily. It was going to be office, but now it's multifamily. And uh, there's over here is two light. And oh, by the way, right next door, once this map updates again, this will be three light. Uh, in this location here. So my point is this kind of development continues to push in all directions. Um, but of course, the closer to the baseball stadium you can get, again, not approved, uh, that'll be uh, some speculation where you could really dramatically increase your, your buy there within the next 10, 12 years. So um, I just wanted to highlight this area because there wasn't a whole lot coming to the market this time. But again, like I said, I have absolutely excellent um, uh, opportunities that are off market. Again, these would be projects that we would represent you as a buyer on. Uh, and you can take a look at all the details I have. And, um, you know, happy to chat further, even walk you through maps like this as to why each area is better than another area. Uh, but we've got Liberty, Pleasant Valley, several downtown. Um, we actually have one over here, like I talked about last time in Lake Lottawana, which is where I live. So long story short, many opportunities. I've got even some other ones in the summit coming up. So just hit me up. You'll start seeing those pop up here on the map and other ones fall off as they go under contract. Uh, so with that, I did want to talk a little bit about some cool uh, news that's coming up. So you guys all know about the airport, the $2 billion airport that Kansas City is launching. And that's actually located up here and is under uh, construction right now as we speak. I'm not sure if it's shown on this particular map, but the airport's quite a ways up north, we call it. Uh, up in the Farrellville Platte City area. But anyway, here's a quick article. So Southwest Airlines, about 40% of all uh, the air coming in and out from a passenger standpoint is excited about the terminal, the largest airline serving Kansas City's international airport and benefactor for its $1.5 billion new terminal has expectations cruising at 30,000 feet altitude for the project just under a year from the scheduled opening. So April of 2023, the new airport will be out. This is an article by Thomas Freestad of the Kansas City Business Journal. And um, the president of Southwest Airlines says, airport affairs teams has monitored the new terminal's progress, which he described as a big win for Kansas City. The terminal's planned March 3rd, 2023 opening stands to align with passenger booking momentum that he said is anticipated to pick up in the summer and continue through the year. In evaluating new flight opportunities out of Kansas City and elsewhere, Van Deven said Southwest trigger points are demand in the area's economic environment. Southwest does offer nonstop service from KCI, so Kansas City, to 27 of the top U.S. markets with June 22 plans for 59 flights per day. This is just Southwest. There's demand there that is independent of the facility. What, ha what helps is if the facility then can support that, talking about the new the new terminal. Kansas City will be in a spot where they haven't been for a long time. As the U.S. recovers from COVID and airlines 
begin restoring their networks, as the demand comes, you're going to have a facility that can better support than you did in the past. And this is only talking about commercial air passenger um, flight activity. This doesn't have anything to do with the pure tonnage of UPS, FedEx, DHL flights coming in on Kansas City because the terminal is going to be faster and more efficient. And of course, is located right in the center of the country. So that's that. Another really fun uh, thing that's happening in 2023 is the NFL draft, which is um, going to be located at Union Station. And here's an article by Kevin Collison. Uh, NFL draft may make next year busiest in Kansas City sports history. Next year may be the busiest in sports history, including up to 350,000 visitors coming downtown next spring for the 2023 NFL draft. Four weeks of collegiate basketball, because we have the first ever sports ETA convention, um, well, Kent Cities, our National Association of Sports Commissioners, said Kathy Nelson, President and CEO of KC Sports Commission. Then a week after that in 2023, the NFL draft, uh, it'll be hopping. It's unbelievable. You think Super Bowl, right? It's crazy. It's a quarter million people in the street. The NFL has made this a massive fan engagement. Uh, we're helping hoteliers understand to summarize, it's the biggest thing that our market has experienced ever. The impact will be profound. Um, the sports executive said many of the NFL attendees are expected to drive to Kansas City for the event. Observing the city was within a day's drive for 55 million people. And the remainder will be arriving at Kansas City Airport's terminal scheduled to open in March of 2023. Uh, and if that's not enough, the article then goes on to talk about the World Cup bid that Kansas City is looking forward to in 2026 World Cup when the U.S. or North America is the host uh, location for that. So Kansas City is hoping to get that as well. So those are some cool pieces of news that came out in the last week uh, that all just, you know, highlights where Kansas City is at on the map. Uh, and I look forward to helping you become a part of that this robust economy here. And if you have any questions about anywhere in the area uh, or anything that Exchange CRE has off market or even the on market ones, let me know. I'd love to talk to you about it. And this is Alex Olson with the Multifamily Minute. And thank you very much. And we'll look forward to seeing you next week.